Okay, here are five things you need to learn as motion designer. Hi guys, my name is Manuel, I'm a freelance motion designer. Motion design is a broad field which requires a bundle of different skills. Plus, you need a lot of patience because it takes years of practice and experience. So, let's start with the most obvious skill set. That's software. Easy, but also hard. Easy because there's a lot of resources out there, like tutorials and courses. Hard because it simply takes time and discipline to learn and improve. Photoshop, Illustrator and After Effects are the ones you need to know. That's what almost all companies work with. After Effects is for animation, of course. But you need Photoshop and Illustrator as well to prepare stuff for animation. Like removing the background in a picture in Photoshop. Or creating an icon in Illustrator which you're gonna animate them. And you'll be creating layouts and style frames before actually turning them into animations. First, the software limits you because you don't know enough to create what's in your mind. Which is really frustrating. But you gotta push through that with lots of practicing. Then there'll be a turning point. You realize that you now know the software well enough to create almost anything that's in your mind. And that's when the fun begins. So be patient and keep on practicing. <laughs> the word designer in motion design might be a hint. The second thing you need to learn is basic design rules and principles. If you want your animations to look good, you need to create style frames and layouts. As a basic rule, the more effort you put into design, the easier it is to animate. You need to know how to choose fonts and combine them. How to work with grids to be consistent throughout your animations. Proportions to balance out your elements. And there's an expression, white space, meaning don't put too many elements in your design. Leave room for it to breathe. You need to establish a visual hierarchy. Which one is the most important element in your design? You need to guide the viewer's eye. Make sure they look where and when you want them to. And make sure everything is readable and understandable without any effort. Color theory is another thing. Which colors do you choose and how do you combine them? I know it sounds like a lot of rules, but once you know them, they create kind of a safe space within which you'll do amazing stuff. <laughs> Number three, you need to develop a sense for timing, rhythm and dramaturgy. To create one amazing still frame is difficult enough. Animations have 24 to 60 frames per second, which have to be just as exciting. Any animation needs dramaturgy, like slow motion moments, changes of speed, surprising transitions, changes of perspective, and so on. All, of course, perfectly fitting to your audio. Especially if you do longer pieces like explainer videos. You need to keep viewers excited for as long as possible. Like in classical drama, there needs to be a structure, rise, climax, fall, leading to the catastrophe in the end. Okay, in our case rather a logo animation, title reveal, call to action, or something like that. So you need to know how to tell a story. Not just content-wise, but with how your animations progress and behave. What do you see? A sunflower, right? Number four on the list. You need to train your eye to see details. Look again. It's colors. It's different gradients of yellow and green. It's lights and shadows. It's symmetry on the one hand, uniqueness on the other. Like the petals are perfectly arranged, but none looks the same. It's textures, it's little imperfections. See how it moves in the wind? Not linear, but seemingly random. Shadows and lights moving along. Because it's little details that matter. It's details that distinguish an okay design or animation from an outstanding design or animation. Organic animations are reproduced natural behaviors. That's what makes them convincing, like a bouncing ball in real is a model for a bouncing graphic shape. As well as the textures of shapes. Little details like light and shadow, a distinct color palette, dirt and grain makes them unique. And finally, number five. You have to learn to be confident. Your work and your creativity is valuable. You spend years to become an expert. I mean confidence not in the sense of ignoring feedback though. But you have to be able to work with clients at eye level. 
be an expert for your clients, advise them. You have all the knowledge your client needs. They like your showroom. That's why they hired you in the first place. Confidence usually comes with experience though. <laughs> so there's hope. I know this is a lot to take in. I've put links to resources in the video description. Go check them out. <laughs> so what's left to say? Enjoy learning and practicing and don't give up. Which of the five points do you struggle most with? Let me know in the comments below. On the left side, I've added some videos you might like. Subscribe to my channel on the right side and ring the bell to get notified when my next video is coming out. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. See you in the next video, guys. Bye.